Today's guest may not be a new face or voice to many of you if you're in the alternative health or health optimization fasting space, um, but if she is new to you, I am so pleased to introduce you to Dr. Mindy Pels. She is a best-selling author, keynote speaker, nutrition and functional medicine expert who has spent over two decades helping thousands of people successfully reclaim their health. She is a recognized leader in the alternative health field and a pioneer in the fasting movement, teaching the principles of a fasting lifestyle, diet variation, detox, hormones, and more. Um, she has a very popular YouTube channel and combines the latest science with practical lifestyle tools that every person can use to reset their health. Um, she's the host of one of the leading science podcasts, the resetter podcast, and the author of three best-selling books, the menopause reset, the reset factor and the reset kitchen. I love Dr. Mindy's energy. She is just, you can feel the health emanating from her. She is so great. She is so full of knowledge. Um, she keeps everything very practical. It's a very high vibration energy that she is in. And, um, I really dived into, in the beginning of the episode, talking about menopause to start off with, because this is such a, I, <laughs> you'll hear me. I said, like, uh, I'm thank you for tackling this. Cause most people don't want to touch menopause with a 10 foot pole. Right. Cause it's very complex, but she shares her own journey of how she kind of went down the road that most women go through of just a lot of negative side effects of menopause and how through her own journey really was able to optimize that. And it's very inspiring um, that we then get into fasting and detox. And what I love about her, she keep, does keep everything so practical. Like she shares some really valuable tools in this episode that you can use to um, offset the toxin load that is in our world right now. Right. So it's like, it's not a fear-based mindset to be afraid of everything. It's like, Hey, just be aware and let's lessen the load as much as possible. And here's some awesome tools to be able to do that. Um, she goes through exactly what happens in your body. If you were to do like an extended day fast, like here's all the processes. This is at this hour. That's when this starts to happen. And it kind of runs you through the biology behind that, which is super awesome to hear that in detail from her. Um, if you want to find her, her website is drmindypels.com. That's P E L Z. And on Instagram, she is Dr. Mindy Pills. She has so much great information. She's so amazing. Um, I know you guys are going to get a ton out of this episode, so we'll go ahead and get into it. Here's Dr. Mindy Pills. Okay, guys, I'm so excited to bring you Dr. Mindy today because one, your energy is so magnetic and it's really cool. I love when I see health practitioners embodying living energetically what they're teaching you. It's like, okay, she's walking the walk. I get it. So this is gonna be a fun episode. And I asked Dr. Mindy, if we could please start with menopause. Okay, guys, if you're listening, you should listen anyway, because it's a good thing to know as a guy, but we are also going to get into fasting and detox. So there's some cool stuff coming super sciencey. So like, but first I'm like, thank you for tackling menopause. That's a fun <laughs> one that like, nobody wants to touch with a 10 foot right? pole, but like we need help. So, okay. Yep. Let's talk menopause. What do women need to know about what's happening in their bodies yep. and what to watch out for and what they can do to help mitigate all of these super fun symptoms that I hear are coming for me. <laughs> yeah, how, how old are you? 38. Oh yeah. They're coming. Good. This is actually perfect. This is, this is like, I, if I could reach every 40 year old woman, um, with this information, it would cool. totally change your forties and your fifties and the way wow. you experience menopause. So, and to the, to your point on the men, I, I think one of my big like ahas going through menopause and trying to solve it in through lifestyle and biohacking tools and detox and things like that was that there's, it's so easy for you to think as you're going through menopause that you're stressed out, you're irritable because of the people around you. But mm -hmm. what you don't realize is you are missing hormones that you had in your thirties and twenties that kept you calm. Mm -hmm. So for like a spouse, this is really important to know because you yeah. might be like, oh my God, my wife has gone crazy. My partner has gone crazy. But you know, in reality, um, she's just missing hormones. So she's ill-equipped to be able to handle stressors she handled right. years ago. So, uh, so men stay on. That's my point. Yeah, definitely. So, um, okay. So, so now, here, now, now that's scary. Thanks. That's cool. I'm like, cool. <laughs> no, we're going to solve it for you. We're going to solve it for you. So, okay. Here's the key thing that, that everybody needs to know at 40, what happens is your ovaries basically start to make a slow decline. Like they are going into retirement <laughs> and it'll take them about 10 to 15 years. It's not like a switch that just turns off, but over the next 10 to 15 years, they are like 
hey, I, I've only got a few eggs left in here. Like I'm out. I'm going to go ahead and slowly make less estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. We're going to release the last couple of eggs. And, and I'm sorry if it's like a woman who's trying to get pregnant at 40. That doesn't mean you, don't, you, know, you can still get pregnant. But in general, the ovaries are retiring. And so what they've got to do is they've got to hand over the job of making sex hormones to another organ. Mm. And so what they do is they hand it over to the adrenal glands. Mm. And this is a major problem for those of us that are type A. For those of us, uh, the women who love to fast and want to do a lot of fasting, for right. women that love to work out and are like extreme, uh, you know, athletes, for women who have a career and maybe juggling family at the same time, there's so many categories where all of a sudden, if stress is high, her hormones tank because the ovaries are not doing their pulling their weight and the adrenals have to do everything. Wow. So I wish somebody had told me that at 40 Yeah, and, and literally like the, my, my story was that I wanted to be in the best shape of my life when I hit 40. Right. I did, I did that by working out so much and eating really well. And I was at 40, I was really proud of the body I lived in mm. by 43. I was a hot mess. Wow. And by a hot mess, I mean, I was teary. I was crying. I'd be like driving to, to my clinic and I'd be like crying. And I'm like, mm. I don't know why I'm crying. What is wrong with me? Um, I started to gain weight, like, especially around my belly. And I would just try to like work out more and more and more. Right. And it, like, it wouldn't go anywhere. I wasn't sleeping. I woke up in the middle of the night with like hot flashes everywhere. Um, my mind was like going vacillating between depression and anxiety I even got suicidal thoughts where I was like, I can't take this anymore. I need out. Wow. And I, that all happened in three years. So I went searching to try to figure out what was going on. And what I found is nobody had the answer. And this is part of why I wrote the book, why I've been so vocal about it, because I wish somebody like me had been there to help went, help me. Right. But literally the answers I got were all my friends who were like a couple of years older than me kind of chuckled, like put their arm around me right? and they're like, oh yeah, now you know why we're all crazy, you know, buck <laughs> up. This is, you know, this is part of menopause. And then one night I was at my kid's science fair and I'm standing next to one of the science uh, displays with a mom who's an OB, very well-known OB in the community. And I don't normally talk shop in those moments, but I was so, in such a bad state. I was willing to do anything. So I turned to her and I was like, hey, Heidi, I'm so sorry to talk shop with you at our kids science fair night, but these are the symptoms I'm feeling and I'm really struggling. Um, is there anything you could do for me if I set up an appointment with you? And she stopped looking at the science experiment. She turned and looked me like piercing in the eyes. And she said, Mindy, I have a practice full of women with those symptoms and my medical textbooks have failed me. And I was like, oh, like you don't have the answer. She's like, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what to tell you. Wow. And so, but what she did say is I have a practice full of women like this. So what I did is I went home and started thinking about like, what are all the things that 43 year old women go through? Like, what is it? You know, we, my, our kids were young, so it had to be stress. I Googled toxins and I found um, uh, Ken Cook's EWG uh, talk about how, how many toxins are in the environment and kids are coming in the world with toxins. Um, I started reading books like The Rushing Woman Syndrome put out by mm -hmm. Libby Weaver. Mm -hmm. And basically what I figured out is there were five things in my lifestyle that had to change. Um, in order for me to match this decline in my sex hormones. And it wow. took me, it took me about three years to put the puzzle back together by 46. I was like a totally different person. I was sleeping, no hot flashes. I was happy, uh, you know, no suicidal wow. thoughts, like just from changing lifestyle. Wow. Can you give us some clues on some of those of without course. giving away your yeah. whole book? No, no, go <laughs> read the book. The book is a great, is a quick, easy read. I've, I've made it because I, when I decided to do the book, I was like, you can't make a thick book for a menopausal woman. Like that's in <laughs> crisis. She needs a quick read. She can grab it, go and implement. So, so that's what I did. So here are the five. Um, the first 
is this idea about eating all day is okay, perhaps in your when you're 25, although I would encourage even 25 year olds to fast. But as estrogen declines, as you go through perimenopause, you become more insulin resistant. So when you hear women go, I just can't lose weight like I used to before, my old tricks aren't working, that's estrogen right. going down yeah. and in, you're becoming more insulin resistant. So you're going to have to learn to fast. You got to yeah. compress your eating window and get more fasting time. Yep. That, was, that was like the first thing I learned. Second thing is you're going to have to go keto. You got to, you, you got to know when to go keto. And then you got to know when to do the opposite of that, which is eat foods that are high, higher in glucose that build progesterone. Mm -hmm. So I came up with something I call the fasting cycle, which was built around the menstrual cycle. And, mm -hmm. um, this is actually a lot of what brought my cycle back into balance where mm -hmm. the first three weeks of your cycle, you are going keto, but the week before your period, you're not going keto. You're actually yeah. stepping out of keto because in order yeah. to make progesterone, you got to have glucose and insulin high. Right. So, and I've actually seen people's, uh, symptoms get worse by not allowing that their body's craving it, please eat carbs. And they're like, no. And then they like, don't have periods. These are women who normally do. And you like they, their, their brain fog goes up, everything tanks. So I love that approach. You know what? At, at 45, that was one of my last pieces was the keto variation at 45. I did a Dutch test on myself and it showed that my hormones were worse than a post-menopausal woman. They were totally wow. tanked. But if you looked at me, you would have been like, oh my God, you're fit. You, you know, you don't have to worry about weight, but I had done so much fasting and so much keto. I just tanked all those sex hormones. Yeah. So yeah. I had to bring back the, right. the hormone building foods. Yeah. Diet variation is my middle name. So I love <sighs> yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So, so that was the second one. Okay. The third one, and this one is also really simple, but why aren't women talking about this? We have a whole set of bacteria in our gut. I call it the estrobilome and mm. it breaks estrogen down. So if you're a woman that's been on antibiotics a lot, if you've been on the birth control pill for decades, mm -hmm. your gut is most likely deficient of these bacteria that break estrogen down. Mm -hmm. So if you Good weren't point. a vegetable eater at 35, that might've been okay. But at 45, you're not getting as much estrogen as you used to. So you've got to break that estrogen down so you can utilize it. So mm -hmm. up your green leafy vegetables, up your, your prebiotic your, or your polyphenol foods. Like you got to feed those bacteria in a mm -hmm. big way. Mm -hmm. So great point. So that, yeah. So that was my third one. And then fourth was detox. I, I literally went through my house one day and like got rid of all toxic, um, beauty right. products, shampoos, cleaners. Um, and I started detoxing and, and that was actually what brought my sleep back. Mm -hmm. It really started getting me sleeping again. And then the last one it's to coin Libby Weaver's, um, statement is rushing woman syndrome. I'm still working on that one, but you just like, you can't do that type a overachiever does yeah. not work at 45. Yeah. Even at 38, I'm, I'm like in this mode where I did that. I did for the last couple, you know, year and a half, I was grinding and I'm like, I won't, I won't live like that. Like if my yeah. lifestyle, whatever I'm trying to achieve requires me to be in adrenal overdrive, that that's, that's a lifestyle problem, not a me problem. I'm not yeah. living like that. And yeah, it's, it's it, boundaries. I feel like is super important on that is like saying yeah. no, even though that sounds really exciting and really cool. And I want to, and I want to help everybody. And I want to, I have to, I will burn out. So yeah, yeah. I love you, that point. You know what I did on that one? Cause this is a, a hard one for me. I, cause I love life. I like right. I do it all. Right. So if somebody invites me somewhere, I want to do it all. So I had to like make a, a promise to myself that Friday after two o'clock into Friday evening and Sunday after two o'clock into Sunday evening was a no time. You invited yeah. me to anything during that time. Yes. I love that. Nine out of 10 times I was going to say no, but then what it did to my brain on Thursday, when Thursday was hard, I was like, Oh, just get to Friday. Cause you got a whole afternoon. You can sit and watch a Netflix series. You can right. do whatever you want. So yep. it gave me permission to rest. 
Yeah. I love that. Like I currently, like I, my calendar scheduler is not available at all on Mondays or Fridays Perfect. because it gives me this barrier to like ease into my week and create yeah. and come out without just being bogged down on calls and interviews yeah. all day long. And even, you know, I'm a, I I'm divorced and have four kids and I have to be oh protective gosh. over travel. Cause I love networking events. It's just yeah. like, it's a fun party. I want to go to everything. And yeah. I realize that if I travel all the time on the weeks. I don't have my kids. I go from like chaotic travel. I'm feeling behind on things to kids and football and sports and ugh, just straight back to travel. And I'm like, mm -mm, I yep. need and demand for myself that time to just like chill and not have yeah. any fast pace. So I love, I mean, I think that's important yeah. for a lot of people, but I know that women, I think it's like, especially when you get people like us who are, we're like, feel called and have mm -hmm. this like mission. And then on top of it, we love fun. Yeah. Uh oh, watch and out. people, we love <laughs> right. people. So it's like, okay, what it, what's the harm in not saying no. But what I realize is if you put a bunch of yeses together week after week, yeah. You yeah. don't feel you're so saying, good. You're saying no to your own self piece for That's sure. Right. And let's backtrack to the cleaning out the toxins in your home and let's sh sh shift gears into toxins. And, you know, I think it's getting somewhat popular. I'd say it, uh, just being real, probably more amongst like the affluent crowd, maybe Perhaps. hasn't true socioeconomically. I feel like the more, uh, affluent people kind of have all the detail, you know, the healthy soaps and the water filters and all of these things. And I think there is a little bit of a socioeconomic barrier there, but I do think that there's quite a few people that are just like, does it really matter? Does it really matter if you have like whatever Dawn soap and Irish Springs soap bars and, right. you know, do you really need to filter your tap water? So can you educate your perspective yeah. on those things. Yeah, it's it's I'm so happy you said that because one of the things I love about fasting is it's free. It's yeah. it's time efficient so you it crosses all socioeconomic yep. uh, barriers. And I think we need to take each lifestyle that would help a woman or help anybody and they need to be it needs to be doable and inexpensive. Right. Otherwise that's not cool like if being healthy means you have to have money. I do not like that. Right. There needs to be health advice that is able, people are able to put into action that exactly. doesn't cost anything. Totally. So, yeah. So, um, this is the interesting thing about those, that 40 year old range and the perimenopausal years is this toxic bucket really comes into play. So when you're born, you are born with a size of toxins, a bucket size that you can genetically hold. So you may have been born with a really big bucket size and you can handle a lot of toxins. And I may have been born with a very small bucket size. I can't handle very many yeah. toxins at all. You get your mother's toxic load. So go and look at your mother and she got her mother. So you can look at your grandmother, you can look at your siblings, but the, whatever, like if your mother has Alzheimer's, your grandmother has Alzheimer's, Alzheimer's is proven to be a toxic issue of the brain it's time to do some detoxing. You need to yeah. look at the generation ahead of you to understand what that toxic bucket is. Mm -hmm. Thyroid problems, that's a toxic bucket problem. But why it catches up in menopause is that when your hormones do this ramp, this real up and down, that signals any toxins that have been stored in our tissues to come out. So mm -hmm. for example, lead, mm -hmm. lead is stored in the bones. So as the hormones are swinging in the perimenopausal years, lead gets dumped into the system and it goes up into the brain. Wow. And when it goes up into the brain, what it feels like is you say, gosh, I, do, I just don't remember things like I used to, or you're in a conversation and you're talking to somebody and you're like, uh, uh, what was I saying? Mm -hmm. Or you walk into a room and you're like, why did I walk in here? Those are all signs that the neurons in your brain are not transmitting information as efficiently. And a lot of times that comes from lead. So the first thing I tell menopausal women is you're not going crazy. There has been a, a hormonal shift. And at the root of that is a toxic dump that has happened in your body. So now let's clean it up. And the easiest way to do it, the, the app I like is called the Think Dirty app or, um, Skin Deep. Do you know those apps? I don't. Oh, they're easy. So you take your phone and, and listening to this podcast, you could literally do this after the podcast. You download Think Dirty. That's my favorite one. 
and go and scan all your beauty products, scan all your cleaners, your detergents, scan everything in your house. And anything that scores like in the red, it gives you like a yellow red, green, yellow, red, anything that's in a yellow red, either throw it out or when you're done with it, replace it with something that's easier, that's less toxic. What an amazing resource. So you don't have to know every single little chemical name and like become this toxin specialist. That's awesome. That's a great tip. Thank you. And then cost wise on that, um, you know, who has a great book on homemade, um, uh, formulas for, uh, cleaners and things like that is uh, wellness mama. Nice. She, yeah. she put She's, out a book. I, I turn to her book a lot. Like when I want to clean something, I look up a formula and I just make it in my own home and nice. it's less expensive and non-toxic. Totally. Yeah. Yep. Great. Okay. Awesome resources. And then, yep. you know, what about, um, dryer sheets, water? Yeah. Let's talk about water and air. You know, what are your yeah. thoughts on that for people? Well, so, so when the, the OB said to me, you, you know, I have a practice full of women. My first thought was what's in our environment. So here's where the toxic bucket comes into handle or comes into place. If you have a very full bucket and you have a very small ability right. to handle toxins and you've got a fragrant dryer sheet and it mm-hmm. might be that one thing that just tips your right. bucket. Whereas right. another person has no problem. So like for me, I don't do well with fragrances. Um, in fact, I would encourage everybody to avoid like the air fresheners, the fragrant dryer sheets, the p- toxic perfumes because they're high in, fa- in phthalates and phthalates are proven to lower testosterone. So for the menopausal woman, that your, your testosterone is already declining. You don't need any extra help in the area of testosterone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so getting those out really makes a difference. Yeah. I love this talk about like the toxic load and I always look to nature, right? I'm always, all of the health advice we give, I'm always looking at, you know, if we were just dropped into the planet and we were living in this nice abundance, you know, gardeny area with fresh water and fish and all these things, like how is our world currently different than that? And is our body capable of handling that much change that quickly? Cause like, I mean, the industrial revolution wasn't that long ago. No. I no. remember when there was no internet. So this no. is new. A lot no. of this stuff is new to our bodies. And so if we look at it, that it's just like minimizing, I I'm hearing from you, like let's minimize as much toxic overload as possible. Like it's going to happen. You're going to eat something at a restaurant at some point that has like refined seed oils, or, you know, you're going to breathe smoggy air. So let's try to just minimize it as much as we can. And that's such a great resource. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I mean, the number one rule to detox is stop toxifying yourself. Like like that's the first place to go. (laughs) So, I mean, I can, we can go into really fancy ways to detox that are more expensive, but let's start by just not Toxifying yourself. And, you know, the thing I think that most people are not aware of, and this has to do more than just hormones, this, this has to do even with the pandemic, is that we live in the most toxic time in human history. If you look at the patterns of where the original outbreaks were uh, of COVID, it, you looked at, you saw Wuhan, you saw Italy, you saw New York, those places mm-hmm. have high their air pollution. Right. And in that air pollution is a particle called PM, uh, P- PM 2.5. And that particle is toxic to the lungs causing inflammation. Wow. So wow. if you live in a big city, yeah, get, get an air, get an air purifier in your home. Mm-hmm. If you live in a moldy house, if you live, uh, you know, you get a piece of furniture and it's off gassing, open up the windows. That stuff matters, not just for hormones, but it really matters for immune health as well. Totally. I live in Salt Lake city where we're in this like bowl. It's not just a Valley. It's the way the mountains turn. We're literally in this bowl. We have horrible air quality, which is so unfortunate because it's such a beautiful city, but I do, I have an air doctor air purifier and it's cool because it has like a red yellow or green light to let you know how it's feeling. It's cool. Even when I start to burn something too much, it'll turn red. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. And (laughs) and to your point on price, if you can't afford an air doctor, get, I I just took it out of here, but um, get it. One of those snake plants. Oh, great idea. And actually, if you Google plants that help detoxify your home, NASA has already come up with like 10 plants that you could put in your home that will pull toxins out of the air. So start there. 
Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's another great tip. Thank you. Okay. Let's move over into fasting a little bit. Cause you know, yeah. some, some people still like, don't, they're like, they're, they feel unsure of themselves. And now granted, I, I, I'm not disrespecting your work. Cause you have so much oh, value, no, but no, I like I to just... joke with people. Cause they're like, how do you fast? I'm like, you don't eat. How do you that's break a... it fast? You eat, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, obviously there's way more bigger ways to optimize right. and things to be aware of, but I like yeah. to give people a yeah. hard time. Cause there's all this unsure, you know, I don't know how to do it or what to do or what's the best way to do it. And you, obviously this is your specialty. So you have ways to optimize. So yeah. I would love to talk about, if you don't mind talking about like dry fasting versus, Oh, like, you want to start with dry fasting. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. <laughs> let's we'll go let's, into the hard. Let's part. talk lengths of time, you know, lengths of time and then yeah. how to, you know, best, best approaches I'd say, um, mentally and also physically on how to approach fasting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so great question. And I'm laughing because I'm like, Oh, there, there are people that don't know about fasting where, I don't know those people <laughs> so yet. So foreign to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah I get questions. They're like, I think I'm going to try it. I never have before, yeah. you know, so they're out there. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay, great. So we want to reach those people. So here's what I would say. If you're nervous about fasting, the first thing I want you to think about is that you are the same human body, same eyes, same ears, same gut, same liver, same spleen. Everything in your body is exactly the same as the cave people. And when we were in the cave people days, we walked out of the cave. We didn't have refrigeration. We didn't have a pantry and we are programmed for survival. We didn't have fake food that lasted on your shelves for, you know, 20 years. Right. So we had to go hunt for food. So we are internally wired to thrive without food. Like I'm not, right. because if we didn't thrive, if we got worse as we fasted, we wouldn't, you and I wouldn't be sitting here talking. Right. The human species would not have continued. So you're going to, when you start to fast, you're going to work with your biology for the first time. You are not working against it. You are working with it. And you are going to discover what I call healing switches inside your body that you cannot discover through food. I don't care how great yep. the food is. Yep. You cannot discover these switches with it. The only way to get to them is to fast. Yep. So that's the first thing for the people that are nervous. The second thing is the longer you fast, the more these switches get turned on and I'll go through kind of the, there's yeah. six of them that awesome. I really like. So the first is 13 to 15 hours. You start to go from being a sugar burner to a fat burner. So instead of using glucose for energy, you're now going to switch your body over into fat and your body is going to burn fat. This is why so many people love fasting for weight loss, because for the first time they're getting to the weight around their hips, to mm -hmm. the weight around their belly, they're, they're, the body is going after the areas where it stored extra sugar years ago. And, and this yeah. is what's so brilliant about our body is it goes, oh, okay. It's been about 14 hours. Food hasn't come in. So I, I remember I stored some food a while ago and I stored it in fat. I'm going to go burn that. Yeah. So it burns fat and in the process of burning fat, it makes a, a, a product that hopefully everybody's heard about a, a byproduct called ketones. Mm -hmm. When you start making ketones, ketones go up into the brain and turn off the hunger hormone. So the more you fast, the less hungry you will be. Yeah. It's crazy. So, yeah. and if you haven't done it, you're like, this doesn't make sense. It may, once you experiment with it, you will feel amazing. Now ketones do two things. Uh, well, outside to turn off the hunger hormone, they will upgrade a, a neurotransmitter called GABA. So you will feel less hungry. Yeah. You will feel calm. And then the third thing they do is any neurons in your brain that might be degenerating from toxins or too much sugar over the years, Western right. diet, they regenerate those. So this is why I want everybody fasting. Right. So that's at just 13 to 15 hours. At 17 hours, you hit something called autophagy. Again, our bodies are so well designed that what happens when you hit autophagy is this intelligence inside every flipping cell in your body goes, okay, we don't have any sugar coming in. We better clean up our act. 
and that it starts to clean up injured um, DNA, injured mitochondria, injured, injured endoplastic reticulum. If there's a virus in there, it will shut down replication of a virus, which is wow. incredibly important for this moment in time. Yeah. If you have fungus, if you're dealing with candida, it pushes out candida. Wow. It is incredible. And that starts at 17 hours. At 24 hours, your gut goes, okay, we haven't had a lot of food in here. I'm going to repair so that when food comes in, I'm a healthier uh, mucosal lining is what really gets repaired. So mm -hmm. any leaky gut, any candida, any parasites, you all of a sudden start repairing the inside of your gut. So those things can't live there easily. And you, any, and leaky gut is like a big deal right now because of all of glyphosate and pesticides mm -hmm. and things like that. So that's a 24, 36. What happens is your body goes, okay, it's been a long time now. Now I, st I remember storing some sugar around my liver. you I remember extra fat in, in other areas and you will start to burn fat like crazy at 36 hours. And remember again, all of this is for your survival. So you could go find food Right at 48 hours. The brain goes, okay, we need to really go look for food. So we are going to increase the dopamine pathway. So it opens up receptor sites so that dopamine can, you can receive dopamine better. So you are alert, you mm -hmm. are happy. So you go find that darn food. It also will spin off some antioxidants to slow the aging process down 48 hours. And then the Mac daddy is 72. The body's so brilliant. It's like, we need to reboot the whole immune system. So we don't we don't die. We don't get an infection and die. And so old white blood cells get, uh, get like destroyed and new white blood cells get emerge. And that's, 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 that's the timeline. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Crazy, I want to just right? save that little snippet. So we can just, <laughs> just keep it on my website. Just go to Mindy. So yeah, that, that's how it works. So can you speak on salt and electrolytes? If you're going to do something extended, like a 72 hour fast? Yeah. Yeah. So this was kind of my biggest, like aha in doing this is how many people in the world are mineral deficient. And so much of that is coming from our poor conventional farming. Uh, you know, any farm that is a conventional farm that's been monocrop doesn't have a lot of, of minerals in it. They're now saying that, you know, bro like the broccoli we buy at the supermarket right. is, has less vitamins and minerals than, than it did 10 years ago. Right. So if you're going to experience experiment with fasting, no, you, you probably are mineral deficient. And why this is important for fasters is that as you start to fast, if you're already mineral deficient, you know, you're not eating. So less minerals are coming in even more. And you can notice things like hair loss. You can notice heart palpitations. And then you stop fasting thinking it's a problem with fasting. And really it's just a mineral deficiency. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. I, I, um, the first time I did a 72 hour fast that last day I had real scary symptoms, quite frankly, like I was like, had numbness and tingling in my arms and legs. And I was like, uh Oh shoot. I mess. I didn't get enough like electrolytes yesterday, but I'm going to, it was bad. Like I, I really was not in a good way. I couldn't even talk and stuff. So uh, uh, years later, a couple years later, I don't know if you've met my friend Barton Scott, who does upgrade. Oh, yeah. Oh, also. Yeah, yeah. I so I met Barton. Podcast. Okay. Awesome. Barton's yeah. the best. And I met Barton at paleo effects and he's like, Oh yeah, let me send you one of my tests. And I do the test sure enough. I mean, I was first of all, so magnesium deficient salt mm -hmm. needed more salt, like all these things. So I was like, ah, I wonder if that's why my fast went so poorly. Cause I was already, you know, doing tons of keto training, intermittent yep. fasting, coffee, like all everything that can deplete your minerals, yep. tons of life stress, you know, <laughs> go, yep. go, go rushing woman syndrome, all of these things. And so now I love that, that point that you're making that it's like, it may not just be the fasting. It's that you walked into this kind of like a bucket your same kind of similar scenario. Like you barely kind of were hanging on there with minerals to begin with. And then you went in the state that's flushing them out even faster. And now exactly you, you just have a mineral issue. So it's a good yeah. thing to get tested. Um, for sure. Um, what about like, uh, mentally, emotionally, you know, cause one of my, one of my concerns with fasting that I see and in, in clients or people who message me is like this tendency to want to like fast 
in order to make up for binge eating, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and then Mm -hmm. like, it's like a punishment instead of this beautiful proactive, like what you're speaking on is like self-love and like, here you go body. This is going to be so good for you. But for some people, I know it tends into like almost like an eating disordered eating pattern, or they get attached Mm -hmm. to thoughts of like, if I'm good, I won't eat. And if I break it early and I'm bad, you know, like this kind of like mental and emotional connection to fasting. Do you have any, have you run into that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. I feel like we, I've, I've, I've seen every fasting scenario yeah. <laughs> on my social media that I possibly can. I bet. So I think it's also a really good point. And the first thing I always tell people, if you, if you go into fasting and you know, you have an eating disorder, um, it really would be best to work with whoever's helping you with that disorder, work with them. Yeah. I have seen people really change their relationship to food with, through fasting. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I, in my twenties, I was an emotional eater in the sense that if I had a bad day, I ate, Right. I, you know, ate, eating was a state changer for me. Right. So when I first started to fast, I didn't, I was out of resources for when I got uncomfortable because I couldn't use food to Mm. make myself feel comfortable. Great point. But what I learned was new things like, gosh, I like walking, gosh, going and looking at the ocean makes me feel good. You know, putting on a disco in my kitchen and dancing Mm. makes me feel good. Love that. I like came up with new scenarios that I think everybody will, will experience. Now I didn't, I just want to point out because it, people get really upset around eating disorders and fasting. Um, I didn't have a clinical eating disorder, but I was an emotional eater. So I think that's the first thing is it's doable, but work with somebody so that you don't become, what do they call it? Orthorexic where you're like so rigid with yourselves. Right. Okay. So that's the first thing. Second thing, I think you have to have a strategy for breaking your fast And if it's a shorter fast, like 24 hours or under, I recommend people break it with three different styles. So if you break your fast with protein, you actually can build more muscle. So the reason that this is important is when you're fasting, you're stimulating autophagy. Autophagy is breaking everything down. On the other end of autophagy lives a a cellular healing mechanism called mTOR. And mTOR is building you up. So if you go into this repair and breakdown, and then you break it with protein, you are going to actually build muscle. So where this helps the person with eating disorder is it doesn't let you go to the Doritos yet. It doesn't let you, you know, hopefully it doesn't make you want to drive through in and out. Right. Um, But more intentional, more intentional. You have a strategy. Right. So eat protein for a couple of hours. Don't limit yourself, have whatever you want. Right. And then you'll feel satiated. And typically you won't do that massive rebound. Right. The other two that I've done is fat. You can eat a bunch of fat, break a fast with fat so that your blood sugar is more stable. So avocados, nut butters, I break my fast a lot with those little keto cups. Mm-hmm. I yeah. break my fast okay. with that all the time. Yeah. And then the third is probiotics. You can do kombucha. You could do kimchi, mm-hmm. sauerkraut. For years, my favorite breakfast was uh, an avocado with a cup of sauerkraut. And, a, and then I would sprinkle hemp seeds on top of nice. it, which feeds your bacteria. Nice. So be intentional about that. Yeah. That can help. And then I think to your point, you know, fasting isn't punishment. It's a gift. Right. Right. It's self-love, not it's self. Yeah. Deprivation. That's and right. So, and, and I love what you're saying about, um, changing your relationship with food, because I, I find one of the greatest benefits of fasting, um, like mentally and emotionally and the connection to food is this feeling of you get this impulse, you get this urge, like, Oh shoot, here it is. I'm hungry. I, I want it that, you know, cause it usually happens like at first, you know, when you would normally next eat, right. You, you feel right. that hunger at first. And of course you don't eat cause you're fasting and you realize it goes away right. and something happens inside of you where you're like, huh, maybe I don't need to respond to every single impulse and I can actually survive this. Ah, yeah. I, okay. You know? And so it, it does kind of, I, I agree. I I'm a pretty intense, not intense, but I'm definitely an intermittent faster. Like I love that lifestyle. It works super good for me. Um, I'm yeah. in that flow and it's it, you're, you're right. Like I think 
you learn that you're fine without food, your blood sugar's regulated, like hormones are working in your favor. And so you lose that appeal to use food as comfort because you, yeah, I, I mean, I love that point. You've learned other strategies of yeah. like, I'm just going to go breathe. I'm just going to go for a walk. I'm just going to go to bed. I'm just tired. Yeah, you know, like, sleep. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. I, I had to change my languaging in my brain. So what my brain orig- originally told me when I started fasting is like, you feel bad now, wait for another hour or two. You're going to be horrible. You're not going to function. Your energy is going down. I'm feeling dizzy, like all those things. Now, what I've learned is I literally tell myself, um, ketones are coming Just sit tight. Mindy yeah. ketones are coming. And sure enough, though, you know, you'll feel a switch and all of a sudden the hunger goes away. The mental clarity kicks in. Yep. So, so it, it can be a practice of self-love if you allow it to be. Yeah. Um, of course you can be critical to yourself as you're doing it, but that's not the type of fasting that we, and don't yeah. be rigid. We, I'm a big fan of varying your fast. Yeah. I'm a fan of some days you fast, some days you don't fast. Like, right. It should be like sleep. You know, yeah. do you punish yourself and say, you know, I'm going <laughs> to sleep 10 hours tonight? <laughs> you don't say right. that. Yeah. It's a, it's a mindful, proactive self-love move. And I, and I love yeah. that. And if guys, if you haven't experienced fasting, like truly, like I know it's the, the thought of it sometimes sounds not nice, right? It's like, I don't want to go without food, but once you experience it, it's like, dang, that was actually really powerful. Like it, and, and yes, that switch, if you fast somewhat frequently, I, it's like, I literally know the moment the ketones oh, kick too. in because yep. I'm like, I am a superhuman. Yep. <laughs> no, I see it. I see it all. Yep. You know <laughs> like, <what? laughs> One of my favorite movies. Did you ever see that movie limitless with Bradley? Cooper? Yeah. That's yeah. what fasting feels like to me. He takes the little pill and now he speaks like eight languages. He predicts stuff. Like. That is what it totally. feels like. Yeah. Even that, like at metabolic health summit is like one of my favorite conferences. And so a lot of the people there are in ketosis and it's like, you can tell, I'm sure oh, you, yeah. a lot of the events you go to where people do a lot of this, yeah. like it, fasting or keto or whatever. It's just like, everyone is thriving, happy. Their brain is on all cylinders. They're super connected and present with everyone. Yep. Like yep. it's, 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 it's noticeable. So, it's and really cool. Yeah. I noticed it right when you got on, I was like, oh yeah, yeah. She's in that state. She's, <laughs> yep. she's here to play. She's not messing around. <laughs> yeah. And actually, so this is a perfect example. Like it's two o'clock my time. Um, I didn't, you know, I purposely didn't eat knowing like, Hey, my brain works better when I'm, right. when I'm in a fasted state, I'll just break my fast when I'm done. So yep. I use it all the time to my I brain too. advantage. Totally. And even maybe yeah. some ketone esters before an interview. I'm like, here we go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that too. Overdrive. Okay. So let's talk real quick about your reset Academy and some of the things that you offer. Cause guys, if you like, if you want to actually try this and you want support support, obviously Dr. Mindy's got your back. So can you tell them what the reset Academy is real quick? Yeah. So my journey with educating people on fasting has been really interesting. And I'm sure you have the same sort of experience experience as you take your information out onto a free public platform. Um, Once I started uh, seeing the need for people to learn how to customize their fasting, because one thing that is like a pet peeve of mine is we don't have a one size fits all uh, paradigm for anything. anything. (laughs) Like the fact that Uh, If I have high blood pressure, I would walk into my doctor's office and he or she would give me the same pill that a 70 year old man who just had a heart attack has. And that same pill would go to me is ridiculous. I feel you. So (laughs) we can't approach fasting the same way. Um, So what we did is we created a free uh, fasting platform called the Resetter Collaborative. It's in Facebook. It's an incredibly supportive nice. group of fasters. We fast together once a month. It's a five-day nice. period where we we fast. So if, if you kind of want to dabble, if you want to see other fasters, super cool community. Um, and we, we, I actually have three people that monitor the compu- community nice. on a daily basis to make sure no negative talk gets in yeah. there. So it's really cool. And then nice. beyond that, we created the Academy, which is a low-cost uh, membership group. We're a little smaller. I mean, we've got like 40,000 people in the, in the free group and we've got, you know, about 2000 in the paid group. And I've got a team of guides there. Every other month we do what we call a reset where we take a 15 day experience and we practice different fasts and different eating styles. Like we're starting one in this Monday. And one of the things that I want to practice 
is what happens when we're fasting and we take amino acids? Does that kill our hunger? What if we take like a probiotic powder like that has inulin in it? There's some research Mm -hmm. showing that that kills hunger. So I practice these kind of things in my membership group. And then we have my guides are in there. I'm in there. We have Zoom calls. Awesome. And so if you need more help, that's the place to go. That is rad. And guys, you can, um, you can get there through your website, drmindypels.com. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then you have your podcasts. What else, what, how else can people, I know you're speaking all over, you know, how else, what's coming up for you and where else can people learn from you? It's a, it's a great question. What's coming yeah. up for me? Um, my, so, you know, you know, podcasting, I, I, I'm like you, I just like meeting people, I like yeah. talking. I want to have good conversations around health. Right. So the podcast really does that. Um, the menopause reset reset came out in April. So if you're over 40, you can get that. And then currently I'm actually working on a a fasting manual for women only that would take women of all ages and show how to fast according to your hormones, but that won't be out for another year probably. Um, but that's, that's my big project. Otherwise Uh you can find me all over social. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. And I've seen you go live. You're, you know, you're very present on Instagram anyway. And so guys, make sure you follow her there as well. And yeah, thank you so much. You're such an amazing educator. I love your commitment to excellence and just like your energy is so positive about all of these proactive steps we can take in our health. So appreciate you you taking the time in the middle of your office remodel today. (laughs) (laughs) It's more like a reorganized, but thank you. I appreciate Appropriately fasted. Yes, right. (laughs) So, yeah, and guys, awesome. we will link everything in the show notes that we talked about today. So just check on that. We'll have all those resources there for you that so you can just easily click and find those. And again, thank you so much, Dr. Mindy, for coming oh, on today. Thank you for having me.